Hello, my name's Liz, and I think I'd like to make a pouch. Saw a sign outside saying pouch maker. Are you a pouch maker? I am a medieval pouch maker, I am indeed. So if I want to make a pouch, can you tell me about that? I can tell you all about making pouches. There's a long history of pouches. I put some of them on the line behind me. First one here, this is what we call an Anglo-Saxon one. It's got a loop around the top made of ivory. The next one is a man's pouch and that's got a fire striker on the bottom. What's a fire striker? I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. Then we've got some red ones, very pretty Viking ones, and then a very, very pretty Viking one here, all covered in silver. Then we've got a Norman one with two hanging straps, a Crusader one with a hidden buckle underneath. And then we've got some ladies' pouches from the medieval. These are, this one's made of velvet. Ooh. And this one is velvet embroidered with gold thread. Wow, I like that. And this one has got some heraldry designs, some blazon embroidered on it. Shields. Shields, yeah. Following up after that, we've got a Tudor pouch. And then on the end, we've got a, a very late medieval one, which is basically a drawstring pouch or purse with an extra security lid on top. Now you're going to be asking me, what's the difference between a pouch? What's the difference between a pouch and a purse you mentioned then? Well, a pouch is something like this, made of leather, hung with straps, usually hangs off your belt. Right. A purse or drawstring purse, to be more accurate, has got, of course, drawstrings. Ah. Now these type, by the several examples behind us, can be made so they're sewed up, or there is one type that doesn't need any sewing at all. And that might be better for you to make at home because it doesn't involve any needles. Now in the middle, middle ages, these were tied on your belt. Just pretend that's tied on your belt. Okay. And of course, rich people had them, lots of money in them. But there was an unscrupulous um, band of men called cut purses and they would come up with their knives when you were looking somewhere else, get the pouch or purse, cut through the strings and run off with the money, leaving you with a load of strings. Now that was a bit inconvenient because it had all your money and all other valuables oh, yeah. in it. So what people started to do is they would wear a second belt underneath this one, under their outer tunic. How would they get at it then? Well, it was awkward. But at least it meant when you pulled your outer tunic over it, it was very difficult for the cut purses to get it. But it was also difficult for you to get at what was inside it. Mm -hmm. So people thought, ah, I'll put a slit in my tunic and then I can put my hand through yeah. the slit into the purse and get what I want. And then somebody said, well, let's just dispense with all this, this palaver, all this messing around. Let's not bother with a second belt. Let's not bother with the drawstrings. Let's just sew it to the slit. And therefore, pockets were invented. Uh -huh. This happened towards the end of the Middle Ages. Pockets. So that's why pockets were invented. But these never went away. My, my uncle had one of these to keep his money in, small by it. So drawstring pouches or drawstring purses are with us even to this day. So that's why you say that you hang on to the purse strings. That's right. The then. purse has strings. And, and what's on the end of them is valuable. <laughs> <laughs> you want to actually see what's in them. Yeah. What have you got well, in yours? I've, I've got some examples here, some typical examples you might find in a medieval purse. This one is probably the most valuable of all. Can you guess what's in it? Jewelry, treasure. Close enough. So <laughs> we're going to pull the strings apart, gently open it up, and then oh. to show you wow. that in this one is indeed a lot of treasure. There's coins. There are bars of silver, and there are bracelets to use as back silver. Shiny stuff. Shiny, valuable stuff. Very heavy though. Okay, we've got another one here. Let's see what we've got in this one. 
Now, you know, I mentioned the fire strikers before. Fire strikers is important because it means you can start a fire wherever you are. And to make a fire, you need steel, hence fire steel, and a piece of stone. Not any old stone, flint works best, hence flint and steel. And if you strike them oh, together, steel, yeah. you can Flint's make sparks. Fine. Let's see if we can get some sparks. Yeah. Now, I'm picking these sparks yeah, yeah, up. I see it. <laughs> now, these sparks are going all over the place. To catch them, to make them into a fire, we need to catch them on something that will burn, not too quickly, not too slowly. For example, coal wouldn't do, and tinder's no good. So what we do, the optimum thing is one of these. This is like a mushroom, it's called a bracket fungus, and they grow on birch bark trees by preference. And when the sparks land on them, they don't go out, they don't flare up. If you put tinder on them and blow on them, it's nice for fire. So this is a fire striking kit. And I would think most people who travel would have one of those very, very useful. Oh, you'd have one in the house as well, perhaps, if you were you would. looking after the fire. You want to keep everything together. Yeah. So what have we got in this one? Ah, this is my trader scales. They come in a leather pouch. Inside here is the metal box. And inside the metal box are the trader scales. It's a bit like a magic trick, this. Take the scales out. Just grab them by the top. And then we can weigh our merchandise with a little bit of silver placed in one of the trays or coins, because a coins was like a weight. It was, it was a value of silver. You might put a piece of jewelry on one side, some silver coins in the other. And when they balanced, that would give you the idea of the value. So this one more to look at. Away from now. And in the last one, and this was probably quite relevant to the next section, this is my sewing kit. In here, I've got most of the things I would use if I was doing some leather work. So what do I have? I have a little pair of shears, a little thread. Can I have them? Yes, you can. There we are. I have an awl, which is basically a metal spike in a comfortable handle. But the spike isn't just a round shape, that wouldn't work. It's actually usually a triangle or a diamond shape. That's a shaping section. And that's very useful when you're working through leather. It makes a hole that doesn't close up easy. So what did you say that was called? An awl. Awl. Yeah. Then we have a needle case to keep our needles in. Of course, these are going to get lost if we're not, if we're not careful with them. And they come in all different sizes. And let's have a look at those. Yeah. 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 It looked very big. Look at that. Well, that's a sailmaker's needle. Oh, that's massive. Yeah, a bit too big for purse making. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, well, yeah. okay. Okay. Things tend to rust quite quickly, though. So we have a whetstone, and with the whetstone, we can just quickly put an edge back on our awl, back on our shears, ready for the next job. A whetstone. Whetstone. W H E T. Not wet. Oh, under why it wasn't wet. Yeah. Okay. Wet sharpening stone. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Then we have a little line winder with some linen thread by preference. This is made from the flax plant and it's very strong. But to waterproof it, we have a block of beeswax which we can rub up and down on the thread. And there we go. That's our little our little sewing kit. And we'll be using this to make pouches and purses. Possibly one a bit like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think making one like this might be a little bit tricky for the people at home. So maybe we might be able to make one out of something a bit, bit easier. Yeah, but if you yeah. show me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You would start off with a big sheet of leather and you would cut the leather out with a little knife. Now, this is a quarter moon knife. <laughs> There's sometimes half moons, but I like the quarter moon. You press onto your leather and you just roll the blade round and it cuts out quite nicely. Once we've cut out a circle of leather, we will then need to punch our holes in it. And I've got a template here because I'm always getting the whole numbers wrong. I find UV and even number works best. So we put that onto our well, piece of leather. Of this is just a piece of wood. Piece of wood. 
Okay. We just put it onto the leather, mark out the holes, usually with an awl or something. And then once we've marked them, we then use a hammer and a metal punch and we can punch all the holes. Now, I don't suppose the people at home are gonna have any leather. <laughs> no, I haven't. A leather working knife. Might have a hammer, possibly a punch. It doesn't look like that, yeah. I think that might be just a bit out of the scope of yeah. our viewers. So what we'll do is we will make you a purse, but using the equipment you might find in the average house. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. We'll have okay. a go. And we'll put these away then and get you to to make them right what do i need what am i gonna well i suggest the best thing you can make them out of is um a high density fiber like leather um you might have some leatherette hanging around you might have some felt or if you haven't got any of those things i suggest you use a simple j cloth or similar buy these in the local supermarket get a pack of 10 for a pound that's pretty good Plenty of goes to have a go at making your purse from that. So, do you want to take one out? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, we've got one of these. Right. Now, they're conveniently folded into four, but sometimes it's easy to lose where the wow. middle is. That's huge. Is that going to make a great big massive pouch then? Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. But you saw the template I'd cut out before. Yeah. The size of the pouch that that makes is only very diddy. Oh, right. <laughs> can't, keep much, that, really. can't keep much, can't keep your wealth in that. <laughs> so what I suggest you do is you get out of it the biggest circle you can. Now to save using compasses and things, the best thing to do is to draw around something. So if you've got something in the house that's nearly that size. Uh, okay. I might have, have um, dinner plate or yeah. what have you got there i've actually got this what's that again it's then? the cooking on it's a barbecue okay. thing right would that do do you think let's see if we can get that onto so there it's going to be too big oh it's almost perfect all oh, right yeah with a bit okay. there's going to be a bit of waste at the top and bottom but we'll get and you'll be surprised that that will make a pouch only about that size so <laughs> i think it's worth doing so it looks big but it, it's just going to be a lot smaller by the time we've got all the folds in it. Yeah. Now, because it's folded already, we can use that to make it even more perfect. So fold it back into its corners, yeah. sorry, quarters, and make a little mark in the middle. So I'm just checking which one is the middle. It's that one, isn't it? Yeah, that's because that's the not the opening edge yeah because if you do it on the wrong edge you'll end up with two half circles okay. i've got a marker know, pen here is that going to be useful yep do the marker in the corner okay so i've got my corner here that's just a little mark. and i've just colored you can see that little corner see it probably against your clothing there yep a little mark in the corner so when i open up that should be in the center yeah should we try that have a look yep just make sure I have got it in the right place. <laughs> Yay! There we go. Right. So I have a mark in the corner. Now what do I need to do? Well, you might wonder how are you going to get the centre of that onto that mark? Oh yeah, there's no to. hole in the middle. No. Or if a, I was using a plate, there's no, no hole, hole in the middle. But there's a dead, dead easy way to do it. Right. Dead easy. So right. we know that this is roughly the right size. Uh -huh. So all you need to do is if you consider that that must be the radius of the circle, the radius is from the centre to the edge. I was just going to say, what's the radius okay. yet? The other side. Could be any length. No, it must be a radius as well. Right. If you're going to make a circle. So all we need to do is to measure that length the same as that length. Uh -huh. What's the easiest way to do that? Fold it you over. You don't even need a ruler. So just fold it over like that. I fold that over there. Yeah, not a hard fold. Okay, just to, so that, to measure gentle it. so I can see where it is. Make a mark. And then if I get my felt tip, I'll put a mark there. Yep. Okay. All right. And we hold that there up. There we go. And there we go. We've got the centre. Uh -huh. We've got one radius and we've got another radius. And then we're going to be cutting that around. But we put the... Yep. So if we put this the barbecue thing on top of it, onto that, line it up with the two marks, 
up to that corner, up to that one. Okay. And draw around. And in fact, if you look at the other side, you can see our quarter there. I keep referring to quarter, but you can actually see it if I hold it up like that. There we go. We're going to cut it round. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be. It's like a quarter of a pizza, isn't yes. it? So okay. if you put that onto there now and draw around it. Okay. So my middle's there. Yep. You might have a, good, uh, a few goes at this, but there are 10 in the pack. <laughs> well, it's all right, because we can clean with the ones that we make a mess of. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, so I now need to draw around there. Lovely. Excellent. So, do you want to cut that out? Yeah, I will do. And I need to keep it folded, don't I, when I cut it Yes. Out. Now, you're going to need a pair of scissors for this. So, the usual warnings if you're using scissors, make sure there's a parent that knows or the parent can cut it out for you. Or you might have some uh, young person friendly scissors with the rounded uh, corners. <laughs> but if you're sure you know what you're doing with the scissors and you've got somebody watching you, therefore you can just gently cut that out. The paper's very soft but it's strong enough to take the drawstrings. And uh, can I just say, if you are a dad or a mum who's doing this with something a bit stronger, a bit firmer like leather, then obviously be careful if you're not used to cutting out. Well, if you we are drawing it on leather, I would suggest that you drew the whole circle and cut it out in one go. Don't yeah, try cutting leather. Yeah, you won't be able to fold it if it's leather. Oh, All great. Right. Okay. So now you, it up. you can do. Uh, just to prove that we have got a circle here. Ta -da. It's not just making it up. It's the right. spot in the middle. All right, now what do I do? Now you've got to make some marks to punch the holes. Okay, so uh, I can okay. just put some anywhere around there. Well, it's best if you get them roughly evenly spaced. Okay. So what I suggest you do is just loosely just fold it in half. Again. Again, it doesn't matter which side, just very loosely. Okay. And find out where that is there yeah you can just snip that together there just nip it oh. yeah because it will try and do the shape anyway okay <laughs> nip it and then just put a black mark there and it's straight down that mark blue line there okay all right your fingers yeah so we like that then do the same again just the half of it yep yeah. although we say it's halves, it's actually turned in a hole into thirds but so we've like. gone into yeah. Center. Nip it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There we go. And remember that in the end of the day, if you get the, the spacing for the holes a little bit erratic, it doesn't matter. It will work just as well. And then do the same over there. Nip it there. And then just put a mark there. Okay. And you'll see we've got three equal marks and four segments. Now you want to divide these up again because one, two, three holes isn't going to be enough really. So we'll divide it up again. So fine, should we just do this one? Measure roughly halfway between those two marks. Okay, what's about there? Yep, and then the same between those two marks. Okay. Okay, and then the same roughly between those but maybe a bit closer to there that's that's good and the same there it's a bit closer to there trying not to get it on my fingers of course because being felt it pain it might be difficult <laughs> to get it off so now you've ended up with one two three four five six seven that's and lot. seven is a good number to make a drawstring purse punching it well you might remember that we punched it in the medieval times with a metal punch and a hammer I'm hoping that you might have a paper punch in your house and then you can punch it with your paper punch. We've got a four hole punch here, but we'll just use one of them. Okay. Get your mark, put the mark come to where one of the holes are on the paper punch, press down as hard as you can. And there we go. Not just one hole, but because it's four layers, you've done four in one go. Right, do you want to do 
punch the rest of those for us. Yes. There's another six to do. Okay. Just take your time. Yep. Slide so it in as far as it will go. To the hole puncher. Yep. And there we go. Okay. One. Luckily, these paper punches two. were quite safe. You're not likely to have any accidents. <laughs> Make sure you don't get your fingers in it. Okay. When we finish punching our holes, you might have noticed that in the uh, purse itself are strings, but there are two strings. You can see the knot of one pair there and there, and those are what enable you to draw it tight. So we'll be putting in two strings. Okay, well, opened up. Yep. Ta -da. There we go. Right then, now you pick a diagonal line. The diagonal is a line that goes from one side to the other. It must be a diagonal. So we'll just pick this diagonal here. And at the top of the diagonal, I'm just going to put a black mark so we can find our way back to that. You'll see why that's important later. Okay. There's our black mark. And we need a second one on the bottom diagonal. So do you want to do that for us? The other side. Yep. In between the two. Yeah, okay. Great, so you can tell it's a diagonal because I folded in half. There we go. Now the two pairs of strings, one pair is gonna go in there and the other pair is gonna go through the bottom. Okay, so two strings in a pair, i.e. starting off and running round, gives us two ends, two ends at the top of one, two ends at the bottom of the other. So do you want to start? String. Put the string through. Now you can put the string through the holes, but it's very, very difficult. And when you come to the second one, you'll find it starts to get tangly. So what you can use is a darning needle. Now a darning needle, it's what my grandmother always used to do for repairing socks. I think she'd be surprised to learn that today we just throw them away. Now the difference with a darning needle and a sewing needle is it's blunt. Okay, it's blunt on the end so you're not going to hurt yourself. But make sure you've got an adult with you to supervise, to show you what to do and to thread it because threading it is probably the hardest thing. Okay, so where are we going to start putting our string in? Can you remember? Yeah. So we've got this mark. Yeah. And that's where the strings are going to come out yeah. of on so the good side. You start on the outside, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go down from the Can outside. Do. Go either way. Yeah, obviously don't cross over it. Work no, no, around. no, I'm going to go all the start way Start there okay. and finish there. How do I know how much string I need? Do I leave it on the ball or can I put it? I wouldn't leave it on the ball. What I would do if I was you is I would get the string, just lay it around in a circle around the outside of the pouch as long as you've got more than you need you that's need a bit fine extra to make that so knot. what i've done here as you can see i've just held it round it we know we've got more by about a good 20 centimeters and then cut it off otherwise you'll, you'll get into all sorts of problems okay and when i'm doing this i'm gonna to have to be very careful to pull it but not pull it right through yeah i would leave about 10 centimetres sticking out the end. Okay, so I'm going to go from the good side to the inside. In and out. In and out, around. all the way around. Now, what I like to think about when I do something like that mm -hmm. is a rabbit. Oh yeah. Okay, so if you hold the pouch for me. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah. And then the rabbit is gonna go down a burrow. Our garden's full of them. Down the burrow. And then he's going to pop up the next one. Not two, you have to make sure it's the next yes, one. It's, it's very, always the next hole. It looks so easy, but sometimes you can get it in the wrong one. So then down the burrow, up the next hole, and so on. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have a case of a pair of holes, a gap, a pair gap all the way around. Right. Now, have you I... got one that you've done earlier? Yep. Okay. Let's have a look at that. 
Okay, so here we go. There's one here and I've got my two ends. I've gone all the way around. We hold that up. I hold that up there to see. We go. There's the two ends. There's the black mark. And as you can see, it's under, over, under, over, all the way around in a circle. If you've got it wrong, there's a way of knowing. And that is, if you don't spot it, when you get all the way to the other end, if the two together don't both come up, you've missed something. Or done an extra one. <laughs> okay. So that's just to check that they both end up with the rabbits are both on the top, <laughs> not down the burrow. Okay. okay. So once you've got to that stage, you then tie a knot in these two ends as close to the the, the purse as you can. Okay. Okay, do you want to just, just do any that now? knot? Um, yeah. Any knot. Just do a knot there. I would make it a bit closer. Okay. The reason is, although when it's laid flat, there are no extra strings, by the time you pull it together, the strings can be quite long. And of course, you can shorten them, but if you make the strings too short, when you open it, you can't open it fully. Now, some people might only want it to come half open, which is great because then you can use shorter strings. But use full length ones first, and then you can modify it later on. Is that all right then? Yep. My knot there. Okay. And then you want to just cut those extra bits off? Yeah. Well, I, think, I, think leave I it would leave now. those until leave it for now until you're one. sure. <laughs> right. Now you're going to put the second string in. Okay. The second string goes in at the other side. You remember I said we have a black mark at the other side. So we do the same again. We start on the other black mark, which is here. And this one is the one that's opposite the one you started in. So where you've got the start and finish at the bottom, you're now gonna have the start and finish at the top. Isn't this so difficult for a drawstring purse? But if you <laughs> don't do it like this, it doesn't work and it does save sewing. Right then. Right, and so it's very important that you start on the outside, on the good side. Yep and that you start by going down that burrow. Because if you go upwards, it's yeah. not gonna work. You follow the original one. So okay. where you had a down. gap before, you'll have a gap now. If you try and fill the gap or do it differently, it just doesn't work. Simple enough when you've got it sorted, but if you don't work mm. it, do it right, it never works. So how are we doing? And up, and we can go all the way around like that that's great okay. give you just one more to show that we've, yeah. we've got start gap two threads gap two threads gap and up. two or two strings okay and there shouldn't be any string at all <laughs> where the gap is that's yeah. right you're keeping the gap <laughs> yeah and you're keeping the strings the same all right okay now we have one that we did earlier <laughs> So here we are now, and we've got the two strings. Now you don't get both of them, do you? No, just get just the knot. Pull them, just pull the knot. So the one with the knot. And you grab the knot on the other the side. One with the knot. If you do it this way, you'll always know where you are. So if we put something in this one to pull give it some shape. Okay. Put that in, say the ball of wool, or ball of, ball of string, and then just pull. gently, gently pull it. I would pull it outwards rather than upwards. So if you got it like this, just gently pull it like that. Okay. And it pulls together. And that is your medieval purse. Not just medieval, Roman examples, and I think Victorian and later examples. Yeah. Now, if you're doing this with um, a fine fabric, if you wanted to go on and do something more advanced, then it will fold up really nicely. If you do it with stiffer material or leather then that first time you pull it up like that when you let it go it goes Boing, I remember I was <laughs> so you have to kind of teach it to stay in a folded up way great now to open it you look for those black marks again you can just see them in the top of your purse so you just tease it open until you find your black marks there's one of them Hold it your finger and thumb. You find the black mark on the other side, hold it finger and thumb. And when you found them, you just pull them and then it will open. So it is. Brilliant. Close and 
open. Now, what they did in the medieval times to make that easier is they actually put where we have the black marks, two little ears. Can you see the ears sticking up, one on each side, like rabbit ears? So then you just grab the ears, pull the ears, and it opens, grab the knot, and it closes. So simple. And Fantastic. with that, you just try it on your, on your belt, and you've got a, a pouch or a purse that you can use to put most small and useful and practical things in. So do we do, do we have pouches today? We do, don't we? Well, funny enough, the first example I ever made, the earliest example, was for a um, prehistoric man wow. who was found um, frozen on the Alps. They called him Oatsy to give him a name, and he had a pouch on him. And it's almost identical to a modern um, back pouch, or bum bag, as some people oh, call them. Yeah. yeah. So you see, there we have 5,000 years of history. Almost identical. And so now we do have pockets, but we also yeah. still use a pouch in a way we can do if we want to yeah yeah okay well that concludes our little session that on pouch and purse very making. simple and um i hope you've uh, enjoyed it and i hope you have a go at making it but don't forget the safety scissors can be sharp and dangerous darning needle make sure you've got an adult and punching it a paper punch will work but a leather punch works slightly better if you've got access to one of those or ask a parent to help always you. ask a parent to help you Okay. All right. Thank you very much.